Thanks for tuning in to the Friday Night Live, everyone. Sorry we're a couple of minutes late. Bill's got his PPC out here to show you about stuck cases. Trent is writing furiously for his, his presentation for tonight, which is going to be on MDT. And I've written out mine for buying a firearm. So, what is the code? Yeah, we've got a So, we've got the, the Seiko over here. What kind of cases have you got here, Rick? Oh, I just got a couple of cases. Just 8mm, 270. I wonder if you get an 8mm into a 306. You can. Yeah, oh, right. It's very worn 306. You can. Yeah, right. And then you fire it and it becomes a very, very worn 306. <laughs> very, very worn 306. <laughs> Apparently, there was. Cases of it happening in Germany in the end of the war. Then the old M1 Garands were getting worn out. Yeah. And how out. would you even fit a threat? How would you even get hold of eight mil ammo and then try and put it in a Garand? Well, they were capturing heaps of ammo off the Germans. And someone just said, "Oh, this might work." Hey, here, man, there, Billy. <laughs> yeah. Them boy. We got, what? we got here one of them. Uh, <laughs> What's this goddamn European shit? <laughs> <laughs> right. I wonder if this will fit in my garage. Fucking bang! Shit goes everywhere. <laughs> I wonder if it did that. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably with the receiver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the receiver got went ping, brother. Yeah. But in 1945. American Army gave FN Belgium. Everyone's still locking up. Sorry, guys. So, we'll, but we will start in a sec. Yeah. FN was a huge arms manufacturing plant in Belgium, mm. and they've been making that uh, now the ninety eights and um, Browning high powers for the German Army. Or Brown, Browning high powers. Yeah. Yeah, we're on. In nine mil, yeah. And when when the Factory was liberated by the Americans. They got the Americans gave FN a contract to recondition three hundred thousand Garands. Is that right? Yeah, just to keep them going. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, all of a sudden they're all out of a job. Well, this is the thing. It's you know, then Belgium would be um, screwed. You know, yeah. it's like you know, devastated. You know, the infrastructure, roads, and yeah. Christ knows what. You know. 500 Sherman's going up on roads. Yeah, root it up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, well that's actually, that's actually a relatively intelligent thing to do. Yeah. Not the sort of thing that you would think the Americans would do, not, certainly not <laughs> nowadays, <laughs> would they? It wasn't, wasn't, probably wasn't all good intentions, it was probably, well, we need these things fixed and we can't send them back to the US, we might as well get them fixed here. We'll screw the bloody poor old Belgians for them. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you don't know what the conditions no. of the, the agreement were. Yeah, you're dead right. So, have you shown Ross how to do that? No, for opportunity. Probably something that we're showing how to do it. Just so we don't have to do it. Anyway, so, I'm going to pass over to Bill. So when you when you're actually shoot out shooting, and a lot of people have experienced uh, tight cases, or had a stuck case, and had had it difficult to get it out, or a separated case, or a separated case in the case of a 303, no, um, or, <laughs> no, or a 22. No, it no, doesn't happen. Oh, it doesn't happen. Oh, and just before we go. Shout out, make sure people give us a like if they can hear us, alright, because that camera is a little bit further away tonight. Okay. If anyone is struggling to hear us, let us know. I mean, I talk a little bit louder than most people, um, but if you can hear us, send us a like, and that way we know Trent's keeping an eye on it and you'll know that everyone can hear correctly. Um, are we doing any shout outs? How many people we got online? We've got plenty of people logging in? Uh, we've got 39 online at the moment. Yeah, okay, so that's good for early in the night. So, appreciate everyone logging in to watch it. Um, and jump in the comments if you want a shout out, or anything like that. Uh, but I'm going to pass over to Bill, and he's going to tell you how to get your cases out without rooting your rifle um, or blowing yourself up.
Yeah, hi everyone. Yeah, just a little cautionary tale tonight about um, tight round stuck cases, separated cases, five cases that won't come out that you've taught, you've belted the bolt open with a lump of wood or a brick or something and uh, torn the rim off. The extractor won't do anything for you, but the case is still in there. All sorts of things can happen, and uh, all sorts of things do happen, I can tell you. The thing about um, where it all starts is when you go to chamber around, and, and, and about there, when you start to shut the bolt, about that position is when you need to make up your mind whether you're going to carry on shutting the bolt and then press the trigger and hope the round will come out, the empty round will come out, or you just tap it open, flick that round on the ground or in your pocket or wherever, and go again. But if you get a, a series of rounds that are going to be tight to chamber, uh, there's a few things you need to do. First off, take the bolt out, get some good light, torch or something, look into the chamber. There may be something in there, like a spider. Rust is what we see mainly in there. And, and if the chamber is rusted, it's, it's caused an interference between the, the brass case and the chamber wall. There's, there's a lining of rust in there. The, Sorry. the case won't. The case won't chamber correctly and if you do manage to get it in there and shut the bolt and fire the round quite often the case won't come out or it's very difficult to get it come out on a bolt action rifle when you lift the bolt to about the three quarter position from the, the next part of the lift is actually what they call a primary extraction the bolt handle or part of the bolt rides on a cam which which pulls the bolt back and is supposed to free the case up in the chamber. And if, if you get a tight round, you lift the bolt to that three quarter position and you can't move it any further, you can bet your boots something's gone wrong in there. You've either had a very big overload, the chamber is rusty, the case hasn't been sized correctly, or there's something else, the case has been damaged or it may have been the wrong ammunition you put in there. That, that's happened also. Just a shout out to some people that are logging in. So we got Michael Wyatt, Nathan Griswold, Hassan Khan, Macropod, they're all tuned in. Howdy guys, shout out. And, uh, and we got Scoops here. It's, uh, you're the bitch, Scoops. Um, yeah, so thanks very much, and good to see you back, Ron. Right, so if you, if you manage to get the case out, and you look in the chamber, and it's nice and clean, um, take the bolt out, look up into the sky, into some bright light, have a good look, and make sure there's nothing, no foreign material or rust in the, in the barrel at all, then, then you need to go back to your reloading bench. You know, good practice is when you're reloading, full length resize your cases. Um, on all, all hunting rifles, because the difference between a, uh, getting a, the shot that you want, kill, shooting a fox or kangaroo or cat, or whatever you're doing, uh, really doesn't matter on a hunting round. Bench resters, sure, you only neck size and uh, so on because you want to keep the cases as tight as you can in the chamber. That's fair enough. But with hunting ammunition, a full length resize every time is, is good insurance that the, gun, the, the firearm is going to function correctly. This is a um, 6mm PPC, tight chamber. I only ever neck size my cases for approximately six reloads. And by then, the, the, hand, the bolt handle is getting tight to shut, but because it's a nice tight chamber and clean, they always come out. 
and at, at about six or seven reloads, that's when I pull in three sides. The, the, the worst case scenario is you chamber around, shut the bolt right down, and then decide no, I, I, for whatever reason, you don't fire the round, and you want to get open the bolt and get the round out. You lift the bolt handle up, the round won't come out, you tear the, pull the bolt handle back and it tears the rim off the case. I don't never bore it out of what? The tool for pulling the case in. I'll get it. Bloody hell. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'll do it. <laughs> can we get a have we got a gun that we can try and get a case stuck in? No. <laughs> The with a live round in the chamber, uh, naturally you've got a, a a bit of a a dangerous situation. So if you've got a live round stuck and the extractor has pulled the rim off and you can't get it out, do not try and knock it out with the cleaning rods. I know plenty of people have and have done it successfully. A few people have done it and done it un unsuccessfully. By trying to ram it out, you drive the projectile back in on top of the powder and with enough force, compression will ignite the powder. And of course, then things go horribly wrong very quick. It's on my bench. Oh, yeah. And uh, stop looking. Yeah. Found it, stop looking. Yeah, that's the one. If you have a uh, live round stuck in a chamber, we can get it out. We've got a tool here that we've made. It goes in, a, in the bolt way. Don't try and get it out with a cleaning rod. I've told them that. Oh, I'll just reiterate it. <laughs> we've got two tools here that'll do it for you. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, this, this tool goes in through the bolt way and encompasses the entire rim of the case. Then a little sleeve slides up and locks it onto the case so it can't, can't jump off the rim. And then we have a nice big sliding hammer that screws onto there. And, and it, uh, one big bang like that and it's out. Now, it takes, it takes only a few minutes to do. I know it's frustrating to have a, a rifle that you can't use, but it's far better to do that than risk trying to knock it out. If, it, if the case is empty, the cleaning rod will probably knock it out, but you want to be careful too. The brass end on the cleaning rod could end up damaged. Zane reckons I've done that a couple of times. He, just he, has, rods. He, not, he hasn't just damaged Cleaning rods, he's damaged carbon fibre, stainless steel, match grade cleaning, cleaning rods. You've got a well, they did the job. That's Trent's. Yeah. Oh. This is rubber. Have I picked up the wrong one? Yeah, oh, you okay. can wear a flog more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I don't want to get that what, what else have we got? Four reloads, damaged case, not very size, six hundred. Or it could be incorrect ammo. And that has happened, but it usually means that the, the you don't get to push the bolt. All the cartridges are made so you can't put them in the wrong chambers. No. But as we saw a couple of weeks ago, it does happen. It does happen. Uh, yeah, most most cases, most new calibers or new rounds that are designed and made nowadays have to meet some stringent requirements through the uh, SAMI specifications and one of the things they look at is can this round be chambered into a, another rifle and will that do some harm. It's fine if, if you chambered a 22 caliber cartridge of some kind in a 308 uh, chamber for instance, or a 30 caliber chamber of some kind. Or fire a 243 and a 308. For yeah, fire a 243 and a 308. Something like that, or a 17 Remington in a uh, 223. 
those things are not going to cause any harm. But as we saw, uh, as we said uh, a few weeks ago, a 308 and a 2506 will go off and it doesn't do it again any good. In fact, it does it a great deal of harm. Uh, so it, just be careful when you're, um, whatever you're doing when you're shooting, naturally. Uh, poor quality ammo, uh, uh, a, a gun that hasn't been serviced and is, is in poor condition, um, damaged ammunition is all going to cause a problem and sometimes they can cause real problems. We're very lucky in most firearm design is such that if it has an accident or a failure of some kind, people don't get hurt or don't get hurt very badly. You might get a, a bit of uh, shrapnel in the cheek or in the sort of in the forehead or something. But if you're wearing glasses, and remember, that's a prerequisite for shooting. Uh, and earmuffs, of course, hearing protection. Uh, just be, just remember, there's your, you've got your face on the side of the gun here, and there's if it's a centerfire rifle, there's about fifty thousand psi here in the chamber when it goes off. Even if it's a twenty-two, there's about twenty thousand psi in there, and you only have to have a case rupture, primer rupture, <coughs> you can end up with shit all over your face. So, just be an improvement for you, Trent. That's like a good Saturday night, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So, Scoops has jumped on and said that even the bench rest guys are going away from neck sizing. So if you are wanting you know, accuracy at, at short ranges and shooting tiny little groups, even the bench rest guys are starting to go away from, from neck sizing. So there's not a lot of reason to just neck sizing only. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. well, they bump the shoulders and, and squash the cases in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Apparently, right? yeah. Well, I, I only neck size because I'm lazy. <laughs> but it was always the way to do it. Like, of course it was. Even for rep class and that sort of stuff, everyone only neck size. Yeah. Because it, and it does give you other advantages other than accuracy. It does give you longer bra, um, longer case life and that yeah. sort of stuff too. Um, can the brass on a carbon cleaning rod be replaced, uh, Nathan? No, in short answer. Um, usually they're sort of um, manufactured fixed in place. Yeah, so if you damage it, it's usually rooted. And like a hundred dollar cleaning rod, you probably don't want to be knocking empty cases out. Buy yourself a cheap cleaning rod for doing it. Um, a bit of fencing wire. Yeah, and hide them from people like Bill, who has got no concept of other people's shit and just breaks it. Um, okay, have you have had some issues with the primer punching, but nothing happening. What might be the cause? Okay. Um, maybe a bad batch of primers. It could be, yeah. So it could have been that the primers have got some moisture in them or something that's killed the the uh, compound in there that works to detonate the cartridge. Um, it can be a, a range of other things too. Like sometimes if you're reloading and you don't see your primers all the way in, um, that can actually soak up a bit of the energy from the firing pin and not set them off correctly. It could be that the firing pins hasn't got enough protrusion, so they set off the cartridges. It could be your mainspring's a bit weak. Um, it could be the firearm's got head space, which means that the firing pin can't reach the cases. There's a lot of different reasons that could cause primers not detonating, yeah? So, um, and, and so, can you kill the... Um, so without knowing, it's, um, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, but it could definitely be that the primers are a bit dead. Scope's pretty much falling size nowadays. Um, successful pig hunt last weekend. Well done, James. Um, pigs are a big problem in WA, and so the more of them you can get rid of, the better. Um, a lot of people think, oh, you know, you can't shoot all the pigs because then we'll have nothing to shoot. Well, fuck, what were you shooting before the pigs were here, yeah? It's not like we're going to run out of pigs. And even if we do run out of pigs, you'll just have something else to go shoot. So oh, don't, like, these people that farm the pigs and stuff and, and pick them up from Northampton and bring them down and release them in the bush down here, um, not really doing us much 
Uh, it doesn't do the shooting fraternity much of a favour, it doesn't do the environment much of a favour, it doesn't do West Australia much of a favour, so just don't do them. Did you want it? No. <laughs> cool. Uh, right, I hope I've answered all the questions so far, but if you do have any questions about getting stuck cases out of guns, um, or why cases get stuck in guns, uh, sing out. Chuck something in the, in the comments and we'll answer that. So you're talking about MDT next, day? Yeah, I'll have a chat about MDT. So who's... Oh, oh shit. Probably yeah, going to like shut that, that down. That's all right. Come around here. Oh, actually, what yeah, I'll do is... Around. We need someone to bring the oh. Magnus other camera over a bit closer in a bit. Just to talk about the different lengths of magazines that you get with MDT. So... Hello everybody, it is good to see you on another Friday night. Thank you for tuning in. I know Zane's already covered that, but hey, good work. Another week is done. It's tax time. Did anybody else hear that the ATO website crashed on the first because everybody's trying to get their money quicker? I think that's hilarious. I'll be the only one. Fuck this. All right, so MDT. As we all know, modular, modular driven technologies are a Canadian based company. They've been making chassis for a while now. They actually pretty much, they're nearly the only chassis that's represented in most power oh. competitions, um, as far as I'm aware. They're, you watch any of the NRL matches, any of the PRS matches from South Africa, and most of them are MDT chassis. Um, there's a few Manners, there's a few McMillan, but they're the ones that are really sort of. Why? Take it off. I think because they make a good product and they're relatively cheap. They're relatively well priced and they're accessible. Yeah, exactly. Sort of and they're made. You know, there's there's plenty of them. There's not. It's not too hard to get one. But they have some really good features that are going for them. So I think that's another good point as well. Oh, you didn't think about talking about that? It's not in your notes, is it? Or well, considering you got notes? considering you gave me no, I'm doing this all off the top of my head. So, considering you gave me six minutes when you got here to tell this me... This is that. week 11, dude. It's not like we just started doing this. Well, cool, go on, What do you know about MDT, mister? So, MDT. Yeah, <laughs> Canadian-based company. Yeah, what else is it? Oh, are you going to do mine, or...? Yeah, I'll do yours. Yours is easy. Yours is what I do. <laughs> yours is... Yours is what... Because mine's written out. Yeah. No, 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 you keep going. No, no, go. No, I'm not going to... Keep going. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for interrupting... Oh. Sticking with us during that rude interruption. <laughs> Alright, so where was I before you rudely interrupted? How they, how they yeah, were listen. so good. How they're so good? Well, they're so good because they've got a number of different features that are designed for those particular styles of matches. So the ACC and the ASS are pretty much the manual or the, the two stocks that represent a large portion of those matches. And that's because of the way they've been designed. I'll start with the ESS because I've actually got one here and it was their first one that was for those or that most of those guys used. I keep covering my face with it. So they've got this long forehead. That's a start. That's not the main reason though. The main reason was this flat section here that we could go under the bags and this magazine essentially is blockade. So it's a, it's a barricade stop that prevented you from actually dislodging your magazine while shooting. As you know with PRS shooting, it is a timed event and it's there's a number of different things that happen, but it's mainly a timed event where they get off of multiple shots at multiple different targets at different distances. So what they needed to do was be able to run up to their barricade, drop them rifle onto it, and not be able to essentially kill time by losing magazines or having a poor stable position. So that's why I quite like the ESS, and that's why a lot of them went to it. The ACC is made in such... Well, in basically the same fashion as this. However, it's one piece and it still has the barricade stop on it. Um, but you can attach weights to it to make it heavier. Did you know that? I'm not listening. Okay. The ACC actually stands for Adjustable comp Core Competition. So you can actually add weights to it and make it a little bit more stable for your shooting during those competitions. All right. That's two that I was going to go through. They do do them for a range of different rifles though, so they're inletted for a whole heap. I can't remember off the top of my head all of them, so I did write it down. So there's your notes for you. ESS, 
everything from Browning X Bolt all the way down to Winchester XPR. So they've got the Howers, short action, long action, Lithgows, Remingtons, Ruger American, Savage Axis, Savage Tens, One Tens, still Attack 338. T3s, T3Xs. Oh, that's right. They make one because it's still attack 338. It's not the same action as a long action Remington. That's it's right. better. Yeah. So the if you wanted to go for a say a still attack 30 or attack 300, you could just actually go, you just get the Remington. You just get the Remington one. But the recoil lugs on the Stillers are a little bit wider, so sometimes you do need to get a little bit of inlaying done. Yeah. But I don't know if they allow for that or not. But they do because they've got quite a large. Uh, recoil lug recess in there. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the 338 whether it's the same and all that sort of stuff, but. Well, the recoil lugs would probably be the same thickness, so yeah. I'd say it'll, it'll be fine, yeah. Yep, but T3, T3Xs, and in the ASS, they're actually doing one for the Winchester 70 now. So if you're all you guys that want to get rid of that supreme piece of wood that's on your Winchester 70s. Well, it depends on which Winchester 70 they're talking about, yeah, because. Are they talking about an XTR? Because that's even in 243, that's a long action. Mm. You mm. know? So, they, I mean, and that won't work because they'll have a long action stock with a short action gun, but you won't be able to put short action magazines in it. Mm. So, be careful if you've got a Winchester Model 70. You'll probably need to bring it into us to make sure that we get the right product for you. And while we're talking about magazines and. and magazines. And magazines, I was going to say, and, and tricks for young players. There is certain magazines that will fit into your different inlets. So, say if you've got a ticker long action and you want to get an ESS and you think, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to seat out my projectile a long way and I'm going to be able to do this and all that. You can't because you're limited to the 3.56 inch magazine. That's all you can get. That's the only one that will fit. I got caught out the very first time I did it. I held it up 3.715. Guess what? Doesn't fit in the gun. Brilliant. So, so what does a 3.715 fit in? Remington 700. Okay. Yep. Remington 700. They do do the 3.85s as well, but you have to specify that. So if you wanted to go yeah, to that. You'd have to have a Remington with a 3.85 inlet in the bottom of the gun. That's right. So like a M M MPR or whatever they call it. MDT is actually calling it the CIP. So I'm not entirely sure why they mean that, but if it's a if they say that it's a Remington 700 CIP, it means it takes the long mag. I wonder if you have a non CIP, and I wonder if I could modify it to take 3.85 mags. No, I'm sure I would. Well, I, I, I didn't actually understand it, but that's that's a trick that I come across too. Well, I did a Savage or something. Savage is the same. So Savage also listed the same. They've got their long action, which is the 3.7. Then, if you want to go to the 3.85, it's once again Savage long action CIP. So yeah, I, I modified a, a Savage. I opened the magazine up towards the rear magazine hole on the bottom of the action. Yeah. <coughs> and you don't take it out of the front. Right. You don't take it out of the front. Uh, I could have on. done. You take it out of the rear, because that's where the bolt locks are. <laughs> no, you don't, don't take, take it out of the front. Oh, all right. Okay. That's, a, that's, that's a, a gunsmithing That's an in, in gunsmithing oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Did anybody <laughs> else get it? Oh, oh. No. <laughs> oh, today's episode is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke, if you're listening, get us some free stuff. <laughs> Fuck, that hasn't worked. It hasn't worked yet, but it's got to work soon, Bill. It's got to work soon. I um, reckon. What, what goodies... Nathan's asking what goodies and accessories can you go onto these stocks? Do you want to talk about or do you want to finish talking about mags? No, no. What what does he mean by goodies? That's oh, stock, what, what rim, the rear stocks. stocks, grips. Well, do you Vertic want to talk about the ASS and the modular um, options? And then we'll talk about accessories that you can bolt on? Or? Yeah, look, we can do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm nearly finished with the ASS anyway. They have actually... We used to only have this one style of butt stock. Um, from now, you can actually get the... Um, buffer tube style one as well if that's what you wanted to go to. I don't see why you would, but there's that option available to you. Um, I actually don't like the buffer tube one. I think it rattles around too much. I'd much rather go for this one, which is nice and solid. This one here is actually running the vertical grip as well, if nobody's noticed. So that's their vertical grip. It is adjustable. You can slide it both forward, give yourself 
less pull between that and your trigger, or you can bring it back if you've got super big hands. Oh yeah, that's smart. Yeah, the other smart thing behind all of it is, ambidextrous magazine release. Yeah. And they're at the back on all of them, so that you can't knock them out. Smart thinking. Oh yeah. They're always at the back. All their chassis do take AI style magazines though, so, oh, except for, there is one, actually, there's the um, LSS for the Ruger American AI, it actually takes the AR mag, so there's that one as well. But well, that's that's the cunning, isn't that the one, the cunning latch on it, it'll take No, it that's, that's a Ruger Precision. Oh, that's a Precision Yeah, Ruger. yeah, so the LSS XL thing it is, in the uh, MDT. It just uses, because the factory Ruger American with the AR mag, it just uses that factory PMAG. So yeah. I think that's a brilliant idea. So Macropods asks, can you get supply of manners or these MDTs are much easier to get? So yeah. more common. So MDTs are much easier to get. A lot easier. Um, but if you want a fiberglass stock, we do Macmillan. Mm. Yeah, so Macmillan, like the one at the top that's up there. Actually, someone asked before what, what that was and I forgot to get back to it. So that is a Stolly action, so it's a Stolly Kodiak, so it's a long action, in 6.5284, so a very good long range caliber. It's got a Lilja barrel in it, I think it's a 1 in 7 Lilja barrel with a tunable muzzle brake, uh, and it's in a Macmillan um, TAC A5 stock with the adjustable cheekpiece. Does it have a rail in the front? Yep. It's got so it's got the entrance rail underneath, so you can put a hand stop on it or something like that. It's got HS Precision bottom metal and a dual HVR trigger in it, which is the one with the safety at the bottom. Which so the, the safety's in the trigger guard. I don't know if you guys can see that, that's a long way out. Yeah. I think it's about a 28 inch barrel, so a really good long range gun. I built that for um, shot show a couple of years ago. And it's particularly easy to shoulder. It's about a six, six and a half grand gun off the top of my head. Yeah, six, six we've got on it. As it sits. Yeah, that's a good McMillan stock, isn't James, it? James, I'll get back, back to you about that uh, seven Remington. HMR Ruger Precision, yeah? Hmm? Well, the other good McMillan stock, I thought you were going to pull out the bloody M42, M40A1. Just for Bill. <laughs> the M40A1, or McMillan call it the HTG. Marty, the LSS chassis, stop kicking the thing you've got, um, The LSS chassis, which is one of their lighter ones, which Trent's got one behind him. Oh, that's is. more of a hunting style uh, chassis stock because of the weight, yeah? I mean, these sorts of things, you probably wouldn't want to carry them for too far. They're, they're quite heavy, relatively speaking. So that's the LSS there, guys. So keep in mind it's the LSS, not the LSS XL. The LSS XL is, well, it used to be very similar to this. It has changed now because we're into the Gen 2s, but it's got the much longer forehand. And it comes up a bit further up the side. Yeah, that's, some shit. that's the Gen 2. So yeah. the Gen 2 comes up and it's a lot higher through here so that it's a lot harder to wrap your fingers around touch a barrel. Cool. All M-Lock forehands too. Yeah. And I mean, if you've got something like this and you want a pick rail on the front, say you want to put on a, uh, a front grip, like on the, the TAC-21 that's there, or if you want to put on a Boscobel bipod or something similar, we can put, we can put pick rails on the, on the front now as well. And all of these are now legal in Western Australia, yeah? Since the uh, police have changed their classifications on Reg 26 guns, you can now have the enclosed four ends on the TAC-21 and the ESS. And the night vision rails, if you want to use a forward mounted night vision, although that's sort of a old technology stuff now. That one's got some weight to it, that one. Cool. So, also remember, if you don't like the vertical grip, they do have their normal AR style grip as well. That's more of a hunting style one, so rather than a bench style back. grip. Yeah. yeah, so very, very similar to this. This is their old home one. And that's their new one. Did you talk about the different four no, I, haven't talked, I haven't spoken about the four inch. You haven't spoken about much, have you? Oh, it's oh. cool now. I'm on holidays next week. I've, I've knocked off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm on holidays next week, guys. So um, if you ring up and call for me or want to talk to me, 
I'll give you his mobile number. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'll be thinking of you, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> if you see me out and about, don't talk to me. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, you can say hello, it's alright. Alright, so the ESS, we'll go back to the ESS. Comes with a number of different forends, because it is three pieces, this one. So it's got the center chassis, it's got your forend, and then your butt stock. So, your forends, a few different styles, few different weights. They do come in 12 inches, 15 inches, and 18 inches. Which one's that? That's the 18. Okay. So that's the 18. That's just the enclosed one. So that's just their bog stock basic one. So it's got nothing on top, just M lock. And it only comes about halfway down. I'm, I like that one. I'm going to get to that one. They do do a night vision one. So this bit here from here to here is actually a pick rail. And then they've got their full length forend where the rail comes all the way back to the scope rail. Looks a lot like the TAC-21. Yeah, like, that's right. I remember there was three. I couldn't remember what the third one yeah. was. Yeah. But they also have another option, which is a bit flash and a bit sexy. That's the 15-inch? That's that's the only one they do. Yeah. The carbon yeah, yeah. fibre. Yeah. So they do a carbon fibre 15-inch rail. Ah, four-end without a rail. Four-end. Be nice if we could edit this. So that's their 15 inch carbon fiber one. It's still an M-lock forend, so you can still M-lock your bits and pieces to it. However, it's a hell of a lot lighter and it's super sexy. So it's a lot more expensive too, but. What's the prices on all these? Really depends on what you order. Because we build them like Lego and they've got so many different options, the prices do vary quite a bit. So. What's an LSS going for now? LSS about 1200 bucks. Okay. That's and, and what's a basic ESS with a 15 inch forend? They exactly set up like the one that's in your yep, head. Yep, basic ESS sets you back about 1500 bucks. Okay, cool. Yep. So they can stretch from 15 all the way up to about 1800. The ACC is about the same, but it really depends on what you want and it also depends on the color. Now, they don't just offer black or FDE anymore, they offer a whole range of colors. This does add price, so adds about another 330 bucks to the cost of the chassis. What, to it, get something other than black. Yep. Yeah, right. And it does add a, about another four weeks lead time. But they got some really cool colours. So, we all know that they do the black and the FDE. That's a given. That's what they've always done. But, That's what everyone does. Where's my notes? They also list these ones. So, burnt bronze. I actually really like the new burnt bronze. The burnt bronze is really, really sexy. I actually like it. Sky Blue, yeah. which is horrendous. Uh, sorry, MDT, if you're watching, but I would have picked a different blue. Uh, OD Green, Crimson Red, which is I actually thought was pretty good. I, I haven't like seen it. I mean, the problem with, with reds is that, like, you can see a picture online, and yeah. it looks cool, and it rocks up, and it's pink. Yeah. yeah like, well, this is the thing. If you actually look on the MDT website, they were list like, showing them. The red looks like it's just been... Photoshopped, it just looks like someone's gone cut paste red, it's red. In real life, they look awesome. They're the color is just an amazing red that actually really sets it off. I actually like it a lot. They do a tactical gray, which is a lot like the Magpul gray. I and, like gray, yeah. yeah it's nice. And my favorite one, which I haven't seen one in real life yet, but I have seen one on YouTube pink, no, purple, Stormtrooper White. <laughs> Many. It, one of our clients got his gun, his TAC-21 done in white and actually looked really cool. Yeah. I actually used the image in one of the previous Friday Night Live ads. So get on that. If you are a big fan of Star Wars or Princess Leia, um, Stormtrooper White's probably... This is making me shit though. That's, uh... Yeah, well, that's it. This is, a, this is another question though. Were they missing on purpose? Can you imagine our... The, the entire Star Wars saga would be are over we really about talking about Star Wars? eight minutes. Yeah, we are. We're going to have to sit here and put up with you talking about crap. The entire Star Wars saga would be over if Stormtroopers could shoot. If they could shoot straight, it'd be all over. The thing is, is that they're a clone of... Um, aren't they a clone of... Boba Fett? Boba Fett. Or and Boba Fett's like... Well, was it Boba Fett or Jinder Fett? Fett? It was yeah. one of the Fett's. Yeah, he got his head cut off. It was Mary. No, what? Well, he's or something. Well, it's, 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 it was Timur Morrison, actually. It was from uh, Once for Warriors. Oh, that day. Oh, cook them in some mix. Yeah, it was that guy. 
And um, probably catch from but it. But you think okay. if they cloned it from him, they didn't be able to shoot? We well, think so. I mean, he was a pig hunter in what became. No, no, I'm talking man. about in Star Wars. Like <laughs> he was a bounty hunter in Star Wars. You think the guy would be able to shoot? Well, you think so. So that's what I'm saying. So maybe they were instructed not to hit their targets. Maybe just scare them into a certain place. Or but if they were clones, why did the guy that was in? Why did they go from being Maori to? Um, African American in like the the sequel series because that was first. No, it was that's afterwards. Yeah, well, it's, they had to die, didn't they? No. The the the, no. the start of the no. the start of the Clone Wars is at the end of the first of the prequel. Yeah, we well, you know the first three movies. The first three was, movies were four, in there. five, six. Yeah, I'm talking about seven, eight, nine. Well, no one watched those. Those were shit. There's actually... It's actually like, the first one, two, three were pretty bad too. Um, but he's turned into an African-American. Yeah. So how does that work? I don't know. They should have used a, a, a Maori or a Samoan or something for um, for the last three movies. I don't know. That's a, that's a question we should pose to George Lucas, really. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we were talking about MD2, weren't we? Yeah. 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 We moved on for them. I anyway, don't think we get on to that. because we going home. Okay, bye, Bill. See you later. People right. are bored of MDT. Easy. People are bored. Oh, I hope you're not bored let, of MDT. How you be bored of MDT? <laughs> let us know in the <laughs> comments <laughs> what you think about Stormtroopers. That TAC 21's been painted, though. It has been painted. Do you so know it's a little bit more shiny than. Do you know why it was painted? Because it got smashed. Because <laughs> what colour was it beforehand? Oh! It was purple. It was purple. It was purple. That was the purple one that we did. That was the purple people eater. And purple and, and tan, like flat dark purple, don't really go together. So why was it purple? So the original band was on on the the TAC twenty one was one of the first ones that the police banned, um, and they banned it on its appearance. Um, and to make a point, we got one chassis which was this one and did it purple, and then we got another chassis which was the Savage Model one ten chassis, um, and we got that one anodized really? magenta. That's still out the back. Magenta? Yeah, yeah magenta. Well, well, it's red. I'm a man. It's yeah. red. And um, red. To, just to make a point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's so, yeah. Just... Catch up. Excellent. All right. You're done with your MDT? Yeah. Thing? If you want to hit me up for MDT, if you want any prices. What's what's the process? Like, say you want a, an ESS for your Howler or whatever. Okay, well then you come in, hit me up. We'll go through all the different options that you've got. Colours, forends, butt stocks, all that stuff. We'll come up with price. You then commit to it. <laughs> Pay me. Um, but basically... So we need to have a deposit down again. We need to have a deposit, yep. And then what I'll do is I'll actually place the order with MDT for you. Now, generally speaking, for chassis, it takes about six weeks from... Us placing the order to when it arrives here. That is if everything goes smoothly. Border Force in Sydney, uh, Sydney of Melbourne predominantly, like to grab them on the way into Australia. They're saying it's Django fit. Django, there you go. They like to grab them on the, in, when they're on. Their, uh, they like to grab them when they're on their way into Australia, and actually detain them. They make us then get a B709 to try and get them out. Now, the problem with that is, is that the um, chassis themselves aren't the prohibited item or the item that we need permission to have. It's the magazines. So we do try to order them separately. However, the boys over east don't seem to understand that. And that can add anywhere into seven, eight weeks, depending on how fast they want to move. So if you do order one and it does get stuck, we do our best to get it out as quickly as we can. However, Sometimes you just have to play the game with Border Force. Which is why it I sucks. employ you to do this. Yeah, and I enjoy talking to them, I really do. So most Our of local them, guys are pretty good. Our local guys are wonderful, they're actually all over it. They're, they notify me as soon as stuff arrives. The guys over east don't know us and they don't care and they've got a lot more stuff coming through. So um, yeah, we, we play that game a lot with them. but. As a as a, a general general rule, they do come through relatively quickly, anywhere from sort of six to eight weeks. But just come in, hit me up. I'm quite happy to show you what we've got, and I'm quite happy to go through with you exactly what you can get, um, especially off the 
you know, the little stuff like the um, LSSs, the LSS rimfires, the XLs, or oh, and the XRS, which we didn't talk about yet, which I will talk about when I get mine in, which shouldn't be too far away. The XRS is their new one. It's a lot like a KRG stock. It is polymer over aluminium, and it's going to be the Dark Snarts. So I can't wait for that one to arrive. And by that, it means cheaper than the other ones. It's, it's not, but... Is it cheaper? No. Oh, okay. It, it's... Well, it's, it's not expensive, but it's not cheap. It's still up around the $900 mark. So it's still up there, but it's a... I, I just think it's going to be a much nicer stock to use. So, yeah. The only one that you haven't spoken about is the Oryx. Well, the Oryx is technically by itself. It's made by MDT, but it is sold as an Oryx rather than an MDT Oryx. And we don't get Oryx from MDT. Okay. We get them from an Australian supplier over in Melbourne. Um, they fit quite a few... Just as many different inlets as all these other ones. Um, however, they, they do work out quite a lot cheaper. Um, and they're actually a really nice little chassis that is one piece. There's no extra buttstock to it. There's no fore end. It is just a chassis by itself. You jam the grip on it, put a mag in it, and you're away. So that's something to look at as well if you, if you are interested in getting into a chassis. Matty Lloyd's put the question up regarding the scope mounted on the on the chassis rather than on the, the gun with, with the TAC-21 because the TAC-21 encompasses the whole action, yeah? So when you're bolting the scope on the top, it's attaching to the chassis, not to the gun. But I've never had a, an issue with accuracy with that. So we've had a few that we sold prior to the bands um, and then since the bands and no one that I've had one sold one to has had problems with the scope moving due to the mounting. And that's because the actions on the that fit into the TAC 21s have to be round action, so Remington and Savage. I think Ticker? Ticker are round action, so oh, do they. I'm sorry, I'd stop listening when I was too busy going. Um, so they're, they're held in there quite rigidly. So they're held into the chassis with um, the standard stock bolts, um, but the, the chassis encompasses the action entirely. So it's very, very stiff. It'll be as stiff as any scope rail or anything like that. So think, think of it like that. Should I get the Marlin Lever 3030? If you're going to get a 3030, yes. get the Marlin. Do it. Don't get anything else. Right. Cool. Okay. So you want me to talk about my thing now? Yeah, well, because I, I reckon this is not going to be your thing. This is going to be our thing. Well, I'm going to bounce it off yours as well, because it's it's so something you that push I'm... me out of the way so that you can sit on both oh, chairs. Oh, fuck. All right. Is that, what, is that what's going on here? There you go. That's what I, put, I don't even know if I want to sit. It's like piss. So, I'm going to talk about the last section of this talk, which I mentioned last week, and I've been talking about it with my mates for a long time, and that is about getting, uh, buying a gun, and uh, specifically not getting in trouble with your partner as a result. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> So you, what, hello what? wives, <laughs> and it's not just wives; it's, it's it's your partner. So you might you you might have a, another a husband or something like that. Uh, and this is <laughs> this is applicable. Doesn't matter who we're talking about because we've got quite a few female clients as well. Oh, all right, I thought you were talking about scoops. <laughs> oh yeah, and scoops. Yeah, no, no. So and we're not being sexist or anything here, no. um, or homophobic or I transphobic love, or. I love you all equally. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so. Before you start, now, and this is really important for people who, and, and this is specifically a pop problem for people who have decided to move in with, with their partners, yeah? Because if you live separately and you've got your own jobs and your own bank accounts, this isn't a problem. Exactly. You just do what you want anyway. But if you live with your, your partner, um, then it sort of starts to become an issue. But, th but if you think about it, if you're living with your partner, um, you might be worried about you know buying something and upsetting them and maybe they don't like you anymore. But the problem is is that a lot of people don't realise is that if you live with your partner, chances are they probably don't like you anyway. So, yeah? <laughs> they stop liking they you. They stop liking you. Longer. So you, just, just don't worry about that too much, yeah? So they probably don't like you. Um, but you still want to mitigate <laughs> too much of the fuss and stuff, you just don't want to deal with it. And so you've got to think about what sort of emotions you need to mitigate. You need to, to mitigate the shock, yeah? So you don't want to shock them with a, with a big purchase. You want to mitigate the, 
the um, the like neuroticism in regards to oh can we afford that type thing uh, and you want to mitigate the sort of the unfairness it's like well why do you get one of them and I don't so and that's what we're gonna look into now um, <laughs> so first thing remember that thousands of guns are sold every year and very very few people get stabbed so the, the numbers are in your favour <laughs> yeah so chances are that if you do something and get this shit you probably not going to get stabbed for it so um don't don't worry about it too much um phil reckons so, your wife's got a horse she can have whatever you want yeah yeah, yeah that's it yeah if she's got an expensive hobby make sure you you uh really sort of push on that button a lot and say god this is expensive oh my god you're lucky i love you because uh you're costing us a lot of money nowhere near as much as my guns cost Okay, so um, the numbers are definitely on your side. So you're not going to get stabbed, even though they don't like you. Um, so the first thing you want to do is before you start trying to negotiate or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're really careful with what language you use. You don't want to use language that gives them the impression that they're included in the decision-making process. So you don't want to use words like... Um, you fucking you dickhead. Use, what? You put up a bloody post for me, you knobhead. Yeah, well, you gave me your phone, you fucking <laughs> What do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> Don't know what you mean, mate. I'm Trent, light beer, NRL, gay nightclubs and rip fire rifles. That's you. <laughs> you put that up. It's your account. <laughs> oh, um, okay, so don't say anything about buying our gun. This is your gun. This is my gun. I'm buying myself a gun, yeah? Um, so it's not a group decision. <laughs> and um, use language like it's my gun i'm going to go buy it it's my decision that sort of stuff avoid using language like let's go and have a look because you don't want to include them in it at all oh can, can we get something like this or how would you like to we look at this or use don't ever use the word please i'm yeah i'm going to take this opportunity i didn't read any of these notes <laughs> and, and when i said this was an hour thing I'm now, I'm now going to start social distancing myself from this because this is turning out to be what I'll He actually gave me most of these ideas. <laughs> I just sort of fleshed them out a little bit. So, is that um, what happens? Um, and you're going to spend the next week with him. So, Well, I also bought a set of those Blue Bolt Sunnies, so hopefully... Oh, did you really? I did. That's, um, yeah. that's, yeah, that's yeah. probably as bad. And works on a chassis. All right, so now that we've got that groundwork down, so we want to talk about the steps to buying a rifle with the least amount of, of issue possible. Okay, so the first thing is establish a pattern. So what you want to do is early on, you want to mention uh, not the item that you want to do, but what the item will do for you, yeah? So you want to talk about, oh, I'd really like to go out shooting with the boys, you know, but I can't because I don't have the right gun, you know? Oh, I'd really like to go away this weekend, but I can't because I don't have the right the vehicle or the or the the cold weather gear or anything like any any purchase like that. You don't want to talk about the product, but you want to talk about the actual um, activities that you want to do, and you want to do that early. Yeah, you want to get that established really early. Yeah, make sure you mention all the problems that you're going to have with the gear that you've currently. Got. That's it. You want to talk. Oh, I'm going to be cold oh, this weekend. It's going to be when cold when I go out. Oh, this, oh, geez. oh, I wish I had a bigger gun. I'm just going to end up wounding Did all you... these bloody foxes when we go out shooting. You know the boys that don't shoot rabbits anymore. They've moved on to kangaroos and pigs and stuff. And my 22 is yeah. just. I just can't do it anymore. Oh, you know, and they're making fun of me. Yeah. It's not fair. Oh, boo hoo. Anthony. Um, uh, so, so you don't want to talk about the necessarily the gun One, itself. Two, four, three. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to get. I'm going to text on my phone. It'll be there now. Um, so, but but talk about the sort of activities that you're going to do. Make sure your partner's aware um, that you're in the market also real early on. Yeah. So there's no surprise when you suddenly come home with a new gun or something like that. You want to make sure that um, there's there's nothing held back and you've got everything out there. Um, to make sure that they, they can't throw up the whole, oh, I didn't know this was happening. You didn't tell me about this. Yeah? No surprises. And don't allow the conversation early on to get derailed. Yeah? So if, oh, I'd really like to go out shooting. You know, I, I, that looks like a lot of fun. Don't let your missus go, you're not getting one of them. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't let them get into that. Don't, don't, you're not getting one of them. Oh, who said I was going to get one of them? I just said I'd like to go out shooting. You don't need that oh. negativity in your life. That's it. <laughs> Um, so step number two is make sacrifices. Now, there's 
if you look in your life, there's a whole range of things that you do that you can probably sacrifice up, yeah? Um, on, the, on the sort of the altar of buying the, the new gun, yeah? And, and you need to make sure that you make people aware of these things. Well, I'm giving this up for you. Not really, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give up smoking. Like a good friend of mine, um, he wanted a new new vehicle, actually. He wanted a shooting new. And he, he did all the maths and he went to his missus with all the numbers and said, if I give up smoking, I could afford the repayments on a new vehicle. And she couldn't really object to that. And so he gave up smoking and he bought his new car. Um, and so make sure that you identify things that you can give up and you can sort of uh, sacrifice them for the sake of the bigger picture, which is a new gun. Um, so Scoop. nothing's nothing's really free. So Scoop reckons he's given up coitus. <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> Haven't we all? That's not really something. How, how would you? How would you make it known to your partner, though, that you that that's something that you're willing to sacrifice? Yeah. Maybe with your hawthorn jocks on. <laughs> Nobody's ever found sexy in hawthorn jocks. Yeah. Well, and so the next thing is though is maybe you don't have anything, or maybe you're not prepared to give anything up. Um, to sacrifice everything, you're still going to have to make things fair. Um, what can you do for your partner to make it fair? Yeah, and make sure that you make them aware that this you're doing this for a specific purpose. It's like we're going out for a nice dinner tonight, love. You know, and it's like I, uh, you know, uh, I really love you and everything. And you'll probably get some more of this, seeing as though that I'm buying this new gun. I'm gonna to have to take you out for dinner more often. You can look forward to things like this happening more often than from now on. Like make sure that they know that this is, there's strings attached to going out for dinner and that sort of thing, yeah? <laughs> what? That's a legitimate strategy. I don't know, I'm just thinking, well, why am I standing in the camera with you? Like, this, is, this is incriminating as. Yeah, so make sure you draw attention to your sacrifices and that sort of stuff and attach them to the item itself. Otherwise, they'll get lost, yeah? It's like, you only take me, you, you, know, you just took me out for dinner because it's nice, or you took me out for dinner because it was my birthday, not because you wanted to buy a gun. Yeah? No, you got to make sure that it's about the gun. <laughs> oh, I'll look after you, love, even though it is your birthday, even though it's our anniversary. I'm going to go stand on the other side of the camera. I think. Okay. Information's key. Don't hide anything, yeah? Because it'll, it'll come back to bite you in the ass. Um, make sure your partner knows everything that you want. So, and total it all up, you know, because you're not just buying a gun, you're going to have to get a bag for that gun, and a sling for that gun, scope. and ammo for that gun, and a scope for that gun, scope rings. and scope rings for that gun. Maybe nice. you have to get a safe. Bipod. You have to get a bipod for it. Cleaning. You're going to have to get your application. Cleaning gear. So tally it all up, yeah? Like, don't just tell her what the price of the gun is. You have to tally it all up, because it's not the raw number, and I said her, but I, that's a, I, I meant a, him or her. It's not about the number, yeah? You might come up with a figure, like the gun might only cost you a grand, but you might come up with a figure of two and a half grand. It's not important that what the number is. The important is that you don't go over the budget. So what you want to do is you want to tally everything up and then you want to add 30%, yeah? Because then you're going to say to her, oh, well, it's going to cost about three grand. That's not important. What's important is that after you've done the purchase, you can go home and, oh, I come well under budget, but I've got it for two and a half grand. I'm a legend, I am, aren't you? Because you can't even go $5 over the budget without being an asshole. yeah? Like, it's, it's, it's not the number, it's the, it's, the, it's the game, yeah? So add 30% to your budget just to make sure you come under. Otherwise, you'll never get another gun again. <laughs> Step number four, is tell lots of stories. So after you've got the gun and you've brought it home, you have to make sure you tell your partner that whenever you use it, yeah? Because if you if they don't think that you're using it, you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna let, be allowed to keep it. You're certainly not gonna be allowed to get a second one. So every time you go out shooting, every time you clean the gun, every time your mates come and look at it, every time you go out shooting, you gotta come back with stories and bore them with stories. So they go, oh, bloody, he loves this gun. Yeah? Otherwise, you'll never get another one again. So <laughs> my challenge is right now, how many of you out there are thinking the same thing? Give us a like and a thumbs up, and let's see how well this, this goes. This is brilliant. This is, And I'd, I'd like to hear some stories back from people as well who've put my plan into practice and have uh, successfully bought new firearms. So the last one's get a deal. 
And so there's a lot of lot of points about this. We had one um, brave person. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> get a deal, yeah? So it's a, it's a quote from the castle. If you're buying something and you're getting it below what it normally sells for, if you're getting stuff for free, then you're actually saving money. And you need to make sure that your partner knows that, yeah? It was cheap, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because if, if you're spending more or if you're spending what everyone else is spending, you're not getting a deal and uh, your partner's not, not really going to think that there's value in buying this thing. You've got to make sure there's value in that. Okay. Um, and just a couple of little points to close. Everyone's heard the same, the same quote that it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. So go through with it anyway. Chances are, like I said, the statistics are on your side. You're probably not going to get stabbed. And uh, you'll probably won't get a divorce. Although there's probably a high percentage rate of that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put a disclaimer at the end of this though. <laughs> um, and the other one is a quote from, I think it's Family Guy. Don't let your partner talk down to you. Don't let them talk to you like you're a child, yeah? Because if you're a child, that makes them a pedophile. And I'll be fucked if I'm going to get top spoken down to by a bloody pervert. <laughs> Yeah, so don't don't let them don't let them talk down to you. And then I started writing another point, and I ran out of time. I can't believe consider you what they do this. <laughs> oh, the last one is consider what organs you can sell. There's a lot of organs in the body that you can actually do without, or at least cut a piece of it out. Yeah. So before the Chinese go and put a tariff on Australian organs, consider what sort of organs you can sell uh, to to fund your next gun. So not only have you alienated. All of China, <laughs> but now every wife, well, it's quite well. Every uh, wife, wife, and alienated China. Every non-shooting husband that watch. <laughs> Big disclaimer: that's what he thinks. This isn't an our segment anymore. This was a him. <laughs> he thought it was funny. Oh, it's hilarious! <laughs> but only because I know that right now. What was the name of that guy? Remember that movie? Is my missus watching? I hope so. <laughs> what was the name of that movie? You guys might be able to help me out. It was during like the Boer War, and it was old mate. Break him around. Break him around. I honestly at the moment feel like the guy off to the other side of Break him around standing there going, Why am I facing the fucking fire? Oh, the young bloke. Yeah, all three of them got shot in the hand, didn't they? He did it. <laughs> Why did the young bloke get killed in the end? Because what, what well, he, he got shot. Yeah, that took a big part of his life away. No, 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 but why did he get shot? Oh, I don't know, I can't remember. Because the the breaker, like Moran, he was the one who ordered it, apparently. Um, and the, the dude with the dark hair and whatnot in the movie, he was the one who actually went out and did it. Yeah. What did the young bloke do? I don't know, I can't remember. But he I just... Look over it. But I feel like him at the moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm standing against the post, but... But there you go. Tried and tested. Uh, Matty Lloyd reckons leave home with an empty gun bag and come home with a full one. Well, that's it. And another good strategy that I know... Uh, oh, Chris, of... Christian reckons pedo. Comment of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll be damned if I'm going to be talked down to by a pervert. Um, so you want to become the, the armourer of your gun club, okay? Because if you're the armourer, any time you bring a gun home, it's just a club gun. You're just looking after it. Yeah? Well... Another sneaky one is only buy guns that look the same, right? And only get one out at a time. So if you got a black gun, well, they all look black, man. It could that's be, right. It's just so the one gun. It could be your two D three. It could be your twenty two. It could be your three oh eight. It could be your three hundred Wind Mag. It could be. It could be. It could be. But only you know that. Why are you taking your gun out? Yes, love. So is it a, is it a smart strategy then to make sure that your partner's got no interest in shooting? Because if they get an interest in shooting, all of a sudden, my guns become our guns. Well, there's, there's two ways of looking at it, right? So, if your partner enjoys shooting, then you can do something together. Yeah. If they don't enjoy shooting, well, then you can do something separately. So, it really depends on how much time you like to spend with your partner. Yeah, yeah. So, I know a lot of people out there think, you know, they get married or they, they hang out with their missus or their husband and they think... Yeah, I hang out with you enough, you're a bit of a knob. I'd rather do something on my own. Then there's the other side, Steph, hi, where I'd like to spend all my time with you. 
Oh, so I'm the knob, in other words. I don't know. Mick, I, Mick's the one that's I, thinking. I, I don't know where you are in your relationship. I don't really, really want yeah. what you were around. I just know that me and my wife like spending time together. So if we went shooting together, that would be something that I could actually get into. Right. Yeah. Is she going to be saying this after spending a week with you, though? Probably not. By the end of the next week? Probably so not. When are you going back to work? Monday? Or... Yeah. I might be back in on Thursday. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how much she gets up. You think I'm going to want you? <laughs> uh, so that's buying a firearm successfully. All right. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? Is there any new products or anything that's out? No, not really. We can't really have spoken about. I am actually going to be interested. I, I'm hoping for next week. I've actually got a couple of uh, CZ four five five, the MDT carbon and the MSR carbon coming in. Well, um, hoping they're going to be here for, for today, video, but well, unfortunately they, not. Yeah, unfortunately, freight just hasn't worked in our favour. Oh, um, once again, the XRS chassis. I'm really hoping. Uh, I was hoping that was going to be here for today, but it just hasn't arrived. So hopefully it'll be for next week. Um, but in reality, look, as far as I'm aware, there's not any real new products out. It is the wrong time of the year for it. Yeah. It's usually around shot show, you know, it's sort of around January. And we've spoken about all the new stuff that is coming, like the Seiko S20, um, stuff like that. But we just haven't seen them yet because they're not in Australia. Once we get them, that's going to be the perfect time. You know, like we'll definitely get one and show them. Cool. Yeah. Apart from that. Apart from that, it's me and him tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so we're open nine till four tomorrow. Start of school holidays too. So yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the last. So if you guys are going away or if you want to get some ammo for the weekend, make sure you pop in tomorrow. Uh, we are open nine till four. I don't have a huge amount left because that arrived. That delivery hasn't arrived either. Um, oh, I still got 22s, your room yeah. price 22 max. We've just got a couple of shortages. So, 223 is a little bit down at the moment, and 3030 is down at the moment. 3030, as in we've got none. It's not down, it's gone. Yeah, okay. So there's none of that. Um, but, yeah, we, we still got ammo to get in here. We've got a whole bunch of new scopes in, uh, mostly loopholes. So, if you want to have a look at that, come in and have a squeeze. Uh, we've got the LRPs, you've got the Mark AR, so they're for your long range shooters. We've got the Freedoms in 3 to 9 and 4 to 12. Uh, yeah, I think I've got both of them. Yep, so they're for like your center fire hunters, rim fire shooters, and that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, I can see that there is a red field there on the shelf as well. There is a red field, yep, which is a great little scope. Uh, there's a Burris there as well. And we've also got the Zero Techs back in stock. They've been out of stock for a little while. Only about and half so, the, the, yeah, yeah, the what group. Want, yeah. But um, yeah, I've got about half of them. Uh, well, oh, spotlights. If you're chasing a spotlight, I have got a whole heap of them. Come in. Uh, we've got the Blitz in both the uh, handle and the uh, remote handle. <laughs> Good catch. We've got the Striker, that's the 170mm. Um, I've got the supports, I've got the suction cap top, um, all that stuff. So if you're looking to set your vehicle up for a bit of a hunting rig over the school holidays, and I can actually help you out there. And uh, what else have we got? So if you're going to run a handheld spotty, so if you're going to stick the spotty out the window and use it as a handheld spotty, the 170 is really good because it doesn't catch as much wind as the 240, so it's better for that. Um, it does use a 100 watt uh, glow, so the actual range on it is very similar. It just doesn't throw as wide a beam, yeah? So if you're shooting boxes, I always prefer to use this because usually you only got one in the light, yeah? But if you're shooting roos or something like that, then you might want the bigger one. Um, but if you do use the bigger one, I do recommend going for a supporter light system. So it mounts in the window, makes it much easier to use, not as much stress on your on your wrist and that sort of stuff. So, and if you're running a halogen globe like this one, 100 watt, make sure you use alligator clips. Don't use the cigarette, uh, cigarette lighter plug. Use cigarette lighter plug if you're running a low wattage, like an LED or a HID spotty. But for halogen, you want to use these because the cigarette lighter leads are very thin, sucks your power, you can also start a fire. Interesting. Uh, oh, I did get the new Hunt Pro rifle bags in as well. So you guys are chasing that nice, affordable bag that's got all the all the cool stuff. Come and hit me up to them as well. They've got a pocket inside. They got a pocket inside. They've got a shoulder strap and everything, so they're actually a real. Oh, some Beretta was in here this way. It was. What did he bring us to for Friday night? Uh, laughs. Yeah. Fuck all. Fuck all. But that's all right. That's all right. We'll get there. No, as always, next week, Harlan. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, what are you thinking? 
Yep, done. You think we got home? Yep. Alrighty. All right. All right. We don't see you tomorrow, guys. Have a great weekend. It was a shitty salute, but thanks very much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Have a good weekend.